Hey there everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome back to another video. As always, I just want to say thanks everyone for tuning in. So in this video, we are going to be running through eight games, you know, and of course, as always, we're going to be looking to see what are the best settings, what's the best resolution, and uh, what hardware are we going to be using this time. Well, we're going to be using the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050, the 2 gigabyte version, and we're going to be using it with the dual core i3-4150T. Now, the 4150T, again, it's two cores, four threads. It runs at three gigahertz, you know, and the reason why I chose this particular hardware is because it represents 9% of what PC gamers are using according to the Steam hardware survey. So 9% of gamers out there are still using dual core processors and the GTX 1050 is a perfect video card to combine with the CPU, you know, just to see how well it performs here in 2023. So I'm definitely curious to see what kind of performance we're going to get out of this hardware combination. So definitely watch all the videos, you know, all the way until the end, you know, and then of course watch my concluding thoughts to see what I think about this hardware combination. So before we get to those videos, of course, as always, remember to like and subscribe to the channel, share the video, comment, do you know all that good stuff, go back, watch all my other videos, you know, because the more likes and more shares, the better it helps the YouTube al algorithm. And of course, you know, I always appreciate the donations, you know, so of course, all my links and descriptions are in the bottom. So just check all that out. So, all right, so without much further delay, let's get to those videos. Hey there guys, so we're playing Fortnite. We're gonna be playing on performance mode, so let's just get right to it. Show you what it looks like. 1080p full screen and limited frame rate because you want to see how many frames and there it is, performance mode. And when you play when you play on performance mode, not really a whole lot to see graphics wise. I mean that's what everything looks like there, so Definitely the lowest you can get, so. Alright, so let's go ahead and ready up and uh, yeah, just see how many frames we can get with this hardware that we're playing with here. So that's it for uh, that playthrough. So playing at 1080p performance settings. I mean, we did get over 100 frames per second. So I mean, you definitely can play Fortnite with this hardware combination. I mean, performance mode pretty much lets you play almost at uh, shoot 60 frames per second on pretty much any hardware really from all the play testings I've done but overall I mean not too bad I mean definitely enjoyable definitely playable so that's it for this one hi there everyone so we're playing dead by daylight and the combination 
hardware we're using is GTX 1050 with a dual core i3 4150T. So let's take a look, see what graphics we're playing with here. Playing on low quality settings with resolution set to 100. So that way we are getting a full 1080p. Even though I know you can't see what resolution we're playing at, we are playing at 1080p. Because the way Dead by Daylight works, it goes according to what your display resolution is. It's okay. So, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and ready up. And as always, we're just going to see how many frames per second we can get using the GTX 1050 and the 4150T. So that's it for this playthrough so looks like we were able to get 60 frames per second so that's uh, definitely a good thing I mean, we were playing on the lowest settings but we are playing at 1080p so uh, but you know keep in mind I mean Dead by Daylight it's never really been a very graphically demanding game so I mean it's definitely more than playable you know so not too bad in this one, so that's it for this one. Hey there everyone. So in this one we're going to be playing good old PUBG. We'll be using the i3 4150T paired up with the GTX 1050. So let's go ahead and take a look at those graphics settings. See what we're playing at here playing at full screen 768p which is a slightly better version than 720p so look at the advanced tabs so we're playing on a low setting so of course it's very low low medium high ultra so playing on low settings so what low settings look like not a whole lot to see there and again PUBG doesn't really have a lot of customization so all right so with that out of the way of course let's uh, ready up and uh, of course let's just see how many frames per second we can get using this hardware combination Alright, so that's it for that playthrough. Looks like we got about an average of 45 frames per second, which, I mean, I guess isn't too bad, but it's definitely not great either. I mean, ideally, you want to get 60 frames per second. So, I mean, this game is somewhat playable, although I, I definitely wouldn't recommend it with this hardware. I mean, PUBG definitely wants a stronger CPU, so, yeah, I mean, that's about all my thoughts on this one. I mean, I did somewhat have fun, so thanks for watching, I'll catch everyone later. What up, everyone? 
So we're playing Lost Ark using the GTX 1050 and the i3 4150T. Let's go ahead and take a look at those graphics settings. See what we're playing with here. Full screen, 1080p. We're playing on high settings. So these are the second highest settings in this game. So. Uh, basically all the eye candy is turned on so what we're playing with there so let's go ahead and uh, of course jump into the game here and uh, let's just see how many frames per second we can get using this hardware combination <laughs> Alright, so that's it for this playthrough, so I'm gonna say that I definitely enjoyed playing this one, I mean, 1080p, high settings, but just keep in mind, Lost Ark's never been a really graphic demanding game, so I'm not too surprised, although I will say we are playing it on the second to highest settings, so it goes to show that, uh, I mean, it's still more than playable, you know, so, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's all for this one, so, uh, catch everyone later. Hey there, everyone. So, in this one, we're playing good old CSGO. We're using the GTX 1050 i3 4150T. So let's go ahead and take a look at the graphic settings, see what we're playing at here. Full screen, 1080p. Playing on uh, on low settings. Of course some anti-aliasing on, but uh, pretty much it. I mean, CSGO doesn't really have a whole lot of graphic customization. I mean, it's pretty much what you're looking at there, so. So yeah, man, that's pretty much it, so let's go ahead and just uh, jump into a match here and let's just see how many frames per second we can get using this hardware combination. Alright, so that's it for that playthrough. So, looks like uh, we got an average of 146. So, I mean, that's I mean that's really great, actually, for a dual-core CPU. But, I don't know, in some ways, I kind of I kind of don't believe it. Because, just kind of looking at the numbers myself, I would say the average is probably, probably more like 120. So... I wouldn't, one of those rare incidents where I wouldn't believe the average too much. I mean, I know that sounds weird, but I mean, is this game more than playable with this hardware? Oh, definitely. I mean, definitely would have fun. 
So yeah, so this was a good one. So everyone have a good one. Hello everyone, so in this one, we're playing Apex Legends, we're going to be using the GTX 1050 with the i3-4150. So as always, let us have a look at those graphic settings, see what we're playing with. So we're playing full screen, playing at 900p, which is close to 1080p. I mean, in all honesty, most people wouldn't notice the difference. So, V-Sync's disabled. We have some anti-aliasing on. We're playing, of course, at very low, two gigabyte VRAM. And the settings pretty much are set to, uh, well, to as low as you can get in Apex Legends. Definitely can't get any lower than this. So that's what we're playing with here. So, all right, let's go ahead and uh, ready up. And let's just see how many frames per second we can get using this hardware combination. So that's it for that playthrough. Looks like we got 80 frames per second as the average. Not too bad. I mean, we're playing at 900p. So, I mean, I did play it at 1080p, but I found that 1080p was definitely well below 60 frames. So I had to go to 900p just in order to, uh, well, in order to get above 60. I mean, but I mean, the game's definitely more than playable. I mean, 900p is not the end of the world so I mean definitely more than playable with these settings so that's it for this one hey there everyone so in this video we're playing Call of Duty Warzone 2.0 using the GTX 1050 the i3-4150T Let's take a look at those graphic settings, see what we're playing at here. Look at the screen, there it is, 50. Playing at full 1080p. No dynamic resolution. Custom frame rates unlimited, because of course we want to see how many frames per second we can get. And on quality, we're playing on balanced settings. Of course, balance settings kind of sets the settings to visual quality and frame rate. You know, basically what it says, balance settings. So, what balance settings look like. Kind of just going through. Of course, our uh, VRAM is completely maxed out. In fact, we're even over the limit. 1050 only has two gigabytes worth, so not really a whole lot we can do about that. So let's go ahead and ready up. And as always, let's just see how many frames per second we can get. Using this hardware company. Hostiles dropping into the area. Watch the skies. Alright, so that's it for that playthrough, so looks like we got about 39 frames per second as the average, so yeah, I mean, uh, somewhat playable, I mean, I, uh, I definitely wouldn't recommend it, a lot like 
PUBG. I mean, this game definitely relies on a better CPU. So, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, Warzone 2.0 is a tough one with this hardware, so that's it for this one. What up everyone? So in this video we're going to be using the i3 4150T We're pairing it up with the GTX 1050 so Let's go ahead and take a look at those graphic settings See what we're playing with here Playing full screen borderless window 1080p And we're playing on the uh, Well essentially what I would call like the lowest settings right? Which Dota 2 they call it the fastest settings so essentially what we're trying to do is uh, maximize the FPS because after all the hardware we're using isn't uh, isn't the best so all right so with that out of the way let's go ahead and uh, just see what we can find here and uh, let's just see how many frames per second we can get using this hardware combination So that's it for uh, for that playthrough so looks like this hardware combination is able to get about 85 frames per second that's the average and uh, playing on the lowest settings but we were playing at 1080p so I'm gonna say that yeah actually not too bad Dota 2 is definitely more than playable with this hardware I mean of course we like to hit 144 but I mean, the fact that uh, we can get well above 60 is, shoot, good enough for me, so. This, uh, that's it for this one, so thanks for watching. Alright, and I am done playing through all eight games. So as always, it was fun, you know, playing through all those games, you know, trying to survive in all those Battle Royale games, you know, figuring out what the best settings, the best resolutions, and you know, and all, and all that fun stuff. So I'll go ahead and I'll get to my final thoughts here. And uh, so overall, uh, actually a really good hardware combination. The uh, two core, four thread, i3 4150T definitely handle these games very well. I mean, of course, the CPU intense games, it definitely struggled, and that's exactly where we'll all start, right? Like, for example, in good old PUBG, I mean, we played at 768p, which is, you know, close to 720p, or, or actually slightly better than 720p, I would say. You know, we, we did get a solid 30 frames plus, I mean, you definitely could lock in the frame rate at 30 frames and definitely play the game very well, but I know that's not the ideal situation because, I mean, obviously you want to be at least 60 to be competitive. So, I mean, it is somewhat playable. And then, of course, the second game was uh, Apex Legends, right? Even though Apex Legends is more GPU, um, we had to play that game at 900p in order to hit the 60 frames per second but we were able to hit 60 frames at 900p now the thing is is all eight games had to be played at low settings i mean the only game really we were able to crank up the settings was lost ark now lost ark you know it's it's not an intense game at all i mean there's a reason why it's uh, constantly in the top five of steam's most 
played games because the hardware requirement isn't isn't very much you know and also i mean it is a fun game to play so you know don't definitely don't get me wrong there and you know of course uh you know warzone 2.0 um, so a lot like PUBG, I mean, it's, it's CPU intense, so it definitely wants stronger, C, stronger CPU. Now, definitely got a solid 30 frames per second in that game. So, you know, again, 30 frames per second is not ideal. I mean, it's playable. I mean, you'll be somewhat competitive. I mean, you can lock it in at 30 frames and... You know, I mean, it'll be in, you'll enjoy it for the most part, right? I mean, if it's all you have, it's all you have. But, I mean, other than that, yeah, I mean, 1080p on, on most of the other games, right? I mean, Fortnite, performance mode, you know, was the only way we could could get decent playback, you know? And believe me, I, I tried playing it at different settings, different resolutions, you know? Normally, I, I would make a video showing three to four different settings with Fortnite, but in this case there's no need to because really the hardware is only capable of doing 1080p on performance settings but i mean overall i mean not bad i mean i would only recommend it again if it's all you have i mean you definitely need at least four core four threads in today's day and age but even then that that's really cutting it close in 2023 i mean most games nowadays you know especially PUBG and warzone 2.0 definitely want six cores or better is definitely what most game developers are shooting for but i mean again i mean not bad experience so you know i did i did enjoy playing all eight games and it was definitely fun so if you made it this far into the video again thank you and again just uh, go back, watch all my videos, share them with everyone, and I just want to say thanks for everyone. Remember to subscribe, and uh, that's pretty much it for this one, so I'll catch everyone later.